Uh, so thank you for joining me. I'm glad to be back here at Embedded World in person. Uh, it's been three years, I think, since the last time I was here. Uh, so I'm very excited, and I'm glad to see the attendance has been pretty great overall. Uh, so with that, I'm going to talk about uh, Sci-Fi's uh, Sci-Fi Intelligence X280 product. Uh, so we just re uh, launched a, a new release of the X280, and I'll be talking about all the new exciting features that we have in this latest release. Uh, so first, just a quick recap of Sci-Fi's product portfolio. Uh, so we have three different product families that we use to uh, classify our products. Uh, so the first being Sci-Fi of Essential Cores. So these are 32-bit and 64-bit embedded processors mostly. Uh, these are the um, uh, sort of most mature product portfolio from, from Sci-5. So within this uh, Sci-5 Essential family, we have 32-bit and 64-bit embedded cores as well as application processors. And these cover a wide range of different applications and markets from microcontrollers to, to IoT devices, real-time, as well as some low-end application processors. The hallmark of the Sci-5 Essential family is really in their configurability. Uh, so we provide this really nice and easy to use customer interface. Uh, it's based in a web browser and allows our customers to go and configure their products, uh, their cores, to meet their application specific requirements. Uh, so these uh, Sci-5 Essential uh, products, they're mature, they're industry proven. Uh, we have over 300 design wins in the industry, all from the Sci-5 Essential family. Uh, so this has been a very successful um, uh, product family with Sci-5, and we continue to invest in the Essential family uh, and make these products better, including introducing uh, a new product in the 6 Series at the end of last year. Uh, in the middle of last year, we also launched two other product families, so the Sci-Fi Performance family as well as the Sci-Fi Intelligence family. Uh, so first we'll talk about the Performance family, which are mainly 64-bit application class processors. And these processors target the latest and greatest um, uh, performance points as well as the, the feature sets that are in uh, RISC-V. Uh, so these are very high performance 64-bit processors. They have features like hypervisors and virtualizations and so on. And these target a number of different uh, applications like networking and infrastructure as well as uh, consumer type markets as well. Uh, so the Sci-Fi Performance family, we aim to have the highest performance RISC-V processors on the market. Uh, and that's certainly the case with the, the P550 being the highest performance RISC-V core that you could license last year. And we're following on from the P550 with the, the P650, uh, which has been made available to early uh, architectural customers as of the beginning of this year. And then finally, we have the Sci-5 Intelligence family. So the Sci-5 Intelligence family targets uh, AI and, and ML type applications. So the Sci-5 Intelligence family leverages all the, the greatness of RISC-V and the RISC-V ecosystem, uh, and it builds on that uh, by taking advantage of the RISC-V vector extension. So the, the Sci-5 Intelligence family has a, a range of different um, uh, implementation points on the, the vector processor side, and they're really targeted at very high performance uh, and yet efficient uh, AI workloads. Um, so in addition to the, the RISC-V vector support, we also introduced the Sci-5 Intelligence extensions in the Sci-5 Intelligence family. And this added support for custom data types uh, as well as functions that aren't necessarily in the, the standard RISC-V vector extension. So these give you access to uh, N8 data types as well as BFLOAT16, which are pretty common in these types of workloads. So focusing on Sci-5 Intelligence, I mentioned uh, just yesterday we launched uh, the next version of the Sci-5 X280. Uh, so the X280 uh, was launched last year, mid last year, and it's been one of our most successful products to date. Uh, we've seen a lot of success in the X280, and this new release brings a number of new enhancements uh, targeting uh, a lot of the customer use cases that we found with the X280. Uh, so there's a lot of new, new features added in the, the update that we're calling 22G1. Uh, but in this presentation, we'll sort of focus on the main three. Uh, so the first is extending performance to 16 cores. So we have support for uh, four clusters of four cores uh, coherently together, bringing the total core count up to 16 cores. Uh, in addition to that, one of the main uh, use cases we found customers were having with the X280 is that they wanted to leverage RISC-V and the, the ecosystem and the ease of programmability uh, of the X280 and the vector extension and use that to augment their own custom accelerators. So a lot of the use cases we found where customers were taking the X280 and pairing it very closely to their own fixed function custom accelerators. 
And with uh, the latest release, we wanted to make that better. So make it more efficient, higher performance. And I'll talk a little bit more about what we did to, to achieve that in the next couple of slides. And then finally, uh, security is important for any aspect of computing, and that's certainly the case with the X280. Uh, and so with the X280, we've now added our WorldGuard system security solution to, to this product. And I'll touch on all three of these over the, the course of the presentation. So real quick, at a high level, uh, first an, an overview of the, the processor itself. So the X280 it, on the scalar side is based on a 64-bit, uh, eight-stage, dual-issue, dual in-order pipeline. So this is a high-performance but still pretty efficient scalar pipeline. Uh, it does support virtual memory, so it's capable of running Linux as well. Uh, so you can run rich operating systems and, and very high-level software stacks on the X280. But in addition to that, on the, the scalar side, we also have a very potent vector engine. Uh, so the X280 supports up to 512-bit uh, vector uh, uh, ALUs. And it uh, also supports the, the Sci-5 intelligence extensions that I mentioned earlier to add support for those custom data types. Now, one of the new things we added is the Vector Coprocessor Interface Extension. Uh, and this is a custom interface that gives uh, our customers direct access to the Vector Register file. And this is one of the improvements I talked about on the previous slide. Now, I'll dig into to more details on the next slide. Uh, and then, of course, I mentioned uh, WorldGuard system security as well as up to 16 cores. Uh, so yeah, so let's dig into the, the vector coprocessor interface extension. So I mentioned the use case where customers have uh, fixed function accelerators and they want to augment that capability uh, by using RISC-V scalar cores, but they also typically had some requirements around uh, compute requirements. So they're wanting to leverage the capabilities of the X280 and the vector processing to both pre and post process data as it gets passed to and from their fixed function accelerators. And so with the Vector Coprocessor Interface Extension, or VCIX, uh, we give those customers direct access to the vector register file. So with that, they're able to pass data uh, very efficiently from the processor core to the accelerator using the vector registers themselves as opposed to doing memory map transactions over the bus. Uh, so what this does is allow for uh, uh, less data movement or sort of the, the data doesn't have to move as far as it usually would and that makes things a lot more efficient. So less, uh, less data traffic on the, the main system bus frees up your main bus as well as lowers power and efficiency. In addition to that, uh, VCIX is really easy to use uh, in that it's, it's mapped directly into the instruction stream and what that allows customers to do is program their accelerators directly from the, the RISC-V core as opposed to having to uh, uh, send data back and forth over main memory interfaces. And so uh, another key advantage of this is it simplifies the, the accelerator design as well. So uh, in the more traditional design, so the one at the top where you have the memory mapped accelerator, the, those accelerators have to have memory functions uh, added to it. So the ability to, to go to main memory and back, or if they need caching as well, to, to take advantage or, or add caches rather to their accelerators. With VCIX, customers are able to leverage the uh, memory subsystem of the X280 itself, simplifying their accelerator design as well. So all of this leads to uh, better, more efficient performance as well as being easier to use. So helping our customers differentiate on their accelerators better. I talked about multi-core, multi-cluster. Uh, so in the X280, uh, we now support up to 16 cores total, and that would be broken down into four clusters of four cores. In order to help uh, accommodate that, we also scale up all the, the subsystems around the cores as well. So we have our coherent fabric that we use to, to attach the clusters together. And now with our, our last level cache, we support up to six, uh, 32 megabytes of last level cache to help performance scale with, with core counts. In addition to that, on the back side of the cache, we now support uh, up to four memory interfaces, again, helping maintain bandwidth as core counts increase. And then finally, WorldGuard. So as I mentioned, security is always an important issue. And with Sci-5, we take security very seriously. Uh, so WorldGuard is our fine-grained security model for isolated code execution and data protection. And what this does is allows the users to define multiple what we call worlds. 
and then have unique restrictions or access permissions for each given world. Uh, so what this allows us to do is then segment the design into many different access types. So you don't have uh, two access permissions, so secure or non-secure. You're able to have many different with each with their own unique access permissions. And so what this looks like in the system, so with the X280, uh, we of course added all the World Guard uh, uh, capabilities to the core complex. So all transactions that go in and out of the core complex get tagged with a World ID. And then that World ID is then used to make decisions downstream uh, that have been defined by the, the, um, uh, by the processor at boot time over which worlds have access to, to which peripherals and which regions of memory. Uh, so of course, in order to enable this in customers' SOCs, it's not just uh, what we deliver with the core complex, but we also have system IP components as well, and we call those World Guard checkers and World Guard markers. So the World Guard checkers uh, check the uh, world ID uh, that tell it which world it's originating from, and based on that world ID, it then makes decisions over uh, which peripherals and which uh, regions of memory that that world has access to. Uh, checkers allow uh, other non-Sci-5 masters to also participate in the, the security solution. So as transactions are made, uh, the World Guard uh, markers then mark those transactions uh, as programmed. So that's a little bit about what we have today. Uh, what I also have here is sort of a sneak peek at the, the Sci-5 roadmap. Uh, so of course, uh, today we have the, the P650, uh, which is in its early access and has been delivered to, to early customers. Uh, the X280 updates I just talked about today with the VCIX interface, multi-core, as well as security. Uh, and then Essential, we continue to update these all the time, uh, especially with the launch of the, the 6 Series at the end of last year. But if you look a, a little bit more forward looking, uh, going into uh, later this year, we have uh, higher performance out of order cores that are coming out, and those will also include the, the vector extension itself. So these will be the first uh, Sci 5 cores that are out of order and have uh, vector compute as well. Uh, and then building on the success of the, the X280 and the, the demand that we've seen for uh, RISC V vector products, uh, we then have uh, future vector products as well that we're planning that have four times the vector compute capabilities in less than half the area. So we're really scaling up the, the performance density. And of course, looking a little bit further out into the future, we also have a portfolio of automotive products that we're planning to introduce uh, that cover both ACLB and ACLD, as well as multiple different product points as well from Sci-5. Uh, so please stay tuned and follow us uh, for more information on these product updates as they come out. Uh, we're look very excited about this and looking forward to engaging with everybody over these products. Thank you.